Stop the FOMO. Today, we list our best of 2023, the FOMO awards for different categories of TVs. We'll be giving awards like the most immersive HDR TV. How about the brightest OLED for sports? Best gaming TV of 2023? Of course, we're also awarding TVs with the best image quality for both budget buyers and the cost no object connoisseurs. And we will also talk about the losers, the TVs that didn't quite make my list. No, 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 I'm not talking about Vizio. They're on a different list. And another new award I added this year is the most recommended TV of 2023. So after looking at all my live streams and so forth, one TV model keeps on popping up. Which model is it? You think you know? Stick around and find out. Let's get into it. And today's video is brought to you by WhoKeys. Trying to build a PC on a budget but don't know where to buy your Windows 10 software on the cheap? WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. At the bottom of this order where it says code card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on settings. In the settings menu at the bottom, select update and security. Select activation, then select change product key, paste what you copied from WhoKeys, click next, click activate, and you're done. You can download a copy of Windows 11 Pro with my discount code SF20 and BAM. Now, before we jump into the words, I want to explain my selection process. First, my words are subjective, as with all awards, but I believe that these TVs do deserve recognition. However, reasonable minds may differ, so other reviewers may choose another TV for a similar word, and that's okay. This is just the insights and my opinion as to what I think is the best in that category. And if your TV happens to be there, great. And if not, well, maybe next year. And secondly, although value is important, right? These awards, I try not to take price into consideration with the one caveat. TVs that are way over $10,000, I'm talking like the 97-inch G3 or the Z2 8K OLED, these TVs are like $15,000, $20,000, not in the running. And I already gave a value-based award earlier this year, which is my editor's choice, the Samsung 77-inch S90C. That TV won because value is such a strong consideration. But these awards listed here today is really about the best in its category, in my opinion. So value is very minor, and I will mention it when it comes into play, like best budget TV, right? So budget, clearly, <laughs> there's some value in there. But for the most part, these TVs are the best in their category. Now, speaking of the S90C, it does win my first award, which is the best gaming TV of 2023. That is the Samsung S90C. It does everything right. It's super bright, whether it's SDR or HDR content. And a big add-on, a big plus, is the recently announced HDR10 Plus Gaming that is now available on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Cyberpunk 2077. Both are now with HDR10 Plus Gaming, but limited to PC gamers. So I don't know if it's better per se, but at least it's out there. So if you want to push your S90C to its HDR10 Plus gaming capabilities and you're a PC gamer, those two titles now support it. But you'll notice I didn't mention the S95C. Technically, they're both very similar, but the One Connect box leaves a little bit desired for consistency. I mean, people are complaining of dropouts and the image quality is so similar in gaming. I'm just going to say, Go with the S90C, play it safe, avoid the dropouts, because ultimately, if you're a gamer, I don't think you really need the One Connect box. And most importantly, it does limit that bandwidth to a certain degree for whatever reason. So again, for gaming, the S90C QD OLED TV. Now, next up is my most immersive TV of 2023, and that is the 100-inch Hisense U8K. Most immersive, not just that, but most immersive with HDR impact. It's mini LED, it's got dimming zones, and it's got 100 inches. Technically, the largest TV you can buy today in the USA. The other TVs that are similarly large are only 98 inches. Those two inches, I think, makes a slight difference, but because of that, it does win most immersive by two inches. Now the other TVs are the slightly less expensive TCL S5, the Sony X90L at 98 inches, the Samsung Q80C also 98 inches, but solely in first place for 100 inch, or the only TV that's 100 inch, is the Hisense U8K 
mini LED and wall dazzling. Now, if you add price into the equation, untouchable. Although it shows $5,000 and not in stock, for the last few weeks, it was at 3,000, 3,500 bouncing around, 4,000 down to 3,000, and one lucky viewer was able to get at $2,500. But regardless, 100 inches, very immersive indeed. The large OLED TV award goes to the 83 inch Sony A80L. I know there are 97 inch OLEDs out there, but again, we're not going into the 15, 20, 25, $30,000 range. I think the 97 inch G2 is $30,000. That's ridiculous, right? At 83 inches, the Sony A80L reasonably priced under $5,000 and it wins my best large OLED TV award, and this is why. This is why it beat out the 83-inch S90C and the 83-inch C3 G3. First of all, the G3, because it doesn't have MLA in the 83-inch size, doesn't have that MLA advantage. So it's down to the processor, right? All three TVs, S90C, the A80L, the G3 C3, all use the same WOLED panel from LG Display. However, the Sony stands on top because it has XR Clear, giving it the best image processing, best upscaling, best motion. Overall, this is a TV that could be doing a little bit of everything, whether it's gaming, Brian chose this TV as his gaming TV, or just streaming or just movie watching. Now, many of you might complain, oh, it's not bright enough. So for those of you who want super bright, but limited to 77 inches, and you're watching sports, LG G3 on Vivid, the Samsung S95C on dynamic mode, as we speed through the sports footage, this is the strength of the G3. The LG G3 is my brightest OLED TV for sports watching, or generally speaking, just the brightest sports watching TV because I found it to be brighter than both my QM8 and Hisense U8K. Comparing sports content and just watching various things, I just max out the brightness, right? The G3 held its own without dimming. So that is a rare treat for an OLED TV. And given its processing, its overall excellence, because it's an OLED, infinite contrast, definitely this is the sports watcher's choice the best 85-inch mini LED TV, and that goes to the Sony X95L. Improvements all around, blooming control with XR Clear makes it the cinema purist choice because everything looks great in that. Streaming, movies, everything you need looks good, but honorable mention goes to the Samsung 8K QN900C, very similar to the Sony in many ways, but then you add that layer of gaming if you want all the gaming features that's on the Samsung that may not be on the Sony because the Sony X95L really is the cinema watcher's dream or streamer's dream, right? Because it has XR Clear. The 900C has some of the gaming features that many people want, and the 900C actually looks pretty good. A little expensive, but again, we're not talking value because the 85-inch X95L also is a little bit expensive. Both of these TVs, though, excellent and are the best among the mini LED TVs out there today. But before we go any further, let's talk about the losers, or rather the ones that didn't make it to honorable mention. And again, I want to remind you the TVs that were awarded a win or honorable mention is only slightly better than the ones that didn't make it on the list. Not a lot better, but slightly better. And still, that makes a difference. So we'll start with the LG C3. C3 didn't make it on any of my lists here today because where it may have been good, the A80L or the S90C by Samsung was a little bit better. And that little bit makes a difference. On the A80L, that little bit was the XR Clear image processor, processor and the motion settings and the like. And on the S90C, more vibrant, brighter, higher specular highlights, better color luminance, wider color range, right? These little things on both of those other models for a similar price takes the LG C3 out of the running. And the Sony X93L similarly is trapped between the Sony X90L and its own A75L OLED TV. So between two of its own models, the X93L has a hard time saying, I'm better than you in something. For example, for $14.99, the X93L, 65 inches, right? Pretty good TV, but then the X90L gives you 75 inches, more immersion. Or 1499, the A75L, OLED, infinite contrast, 
no blooming at all. You want brighter, go with the brighter 75 inch X90L. So the X93L is kind of trapped. Not to say it's a bad TV. There has been situations where I did recommend the X93L where the consumer was stuck at around 65 inches, right? This was their budget, $14.99 around there. 65 inches is as large as they can go. And they want bright and punchy and deep blacks. The X93L got there and the A75L wasn't bright enough because it was an OLED. So in that case, the X93L was the better TV for them because they did want a Sony. But that's an isolated case that doesn't really deserve an award. So that's an example of two popular or two pretty respectable models this year that didn't receive any awards from me next year or didn't receive any awards from me this year but how could they improve next year well the x93l technically is last year's tv being sold this year so next year i don't think it'll be around the c3 however how can it do better next year as a c4 and we've talked about this over and over in all my streams it so needs the mla right not the super duper mla that the g3 has but something to make it competitive to make it as bright as the s90c otherwise the sony a80l similar brightness beats it in image processing so the c3 doesn't really offer much to beat the competition two tvs in this case so let me know what you think if you have the c3 why did you choose it over the A80L or the S90C? On to the awards that many of you have been waiting for, the best HDR image quality awards, right? We'll start with the best budget HDR TV, and that is the TCL Q7 with honorable mention to the U7K. I personally thought the Q7 had more HDR impact, better blooming control, better contrast. Its color was slightly off compared to the U7K out of the box, but it was close enough that I wouldn't say, oh, Q7 color is terrible. However, the U7K is very good. It's just falls short in contrast, in my opinion, as well as the HDR impact in terms of the deeper blacks. I thought the Q7 was just a little bit better, but the U7K came close enough for the same price that it does earn honorable mention. But if you want the best HDR impact, definitely the QM8 and the U8K. Now, my award goes to both of them. It's a tie. The QM8 has slightly better contrast and slightly deeper blacks than the U8K, but the U8K, slightly more natural skin tones, slightly better motion settings. And so both of these affect your viewer experience, right? So I can't really choose one over the other and say this is a hard win for either one. So yes, I know. I took the chicken way out and chose both tie two-way tie between the TCL QM8 and the U8K for HDR impact. And it's because between the deep blacks and it's just bright specular highlights, quite amazing for a mini LED TV from TCL Hisense, this gets the win for me. Yes, I know OLEDs could be better, but it doesn't get as bright in terms of overall impact. Now, if you do have the money, right, the cost no object connoisseur where you are a flagship fiend, then that award, and we're talking best overall TV award goes to the Sony A95L. No surprise. It may not be the brightest OLED, but it gets more than bright enough for most people, including myself. And it has amazing skin tones out of the box, in my opinion. I love the motion settings. I love the XR Clear for streaming content, which is what most of us watch today. So for me, this is my award winner for Best Overall TV of 2023, but we are not done. One more award. What is my most recommended TV of 2023, otherwise known as Best TV for Most People? The Sony X90L. It comes in all different sizes. Again, most people need all different types of sizes, right? Some people want a 55 inch, comes in a 55 inch, 65, 75, 85, and a gargantuan 98 inch size from 55 to 98 inch. All the sizes are covered. XR Clear, most people stream. It has all the streaming capabilities of the other Sony TVs in 2023 with XR Clear, and it looks great. I'm keeping this TV for my reference as a streaming TV to compare with 2024 models to see if the Hisense and the TCLs and the Samsungs and the LG, if they come out with an LCD TV worth reviewing next year, if it can match up to this year's XR Clear. So my X90L continues to be the benchmark for best TV for most people. I think it definitely earns it.
But I know you disagree because, again, subjective awards. Tell me what your awards would be for the various categories you talked about today. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stop the FOMO. Thank you.